I have to admit there were moments where I considered just scraping them all off into the garbage can and starting all over. That isn't what I ended up doing, but I did consider it. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lee Monet. Welcome to my adventures in middle aging and specifically, at least for the last few videos, my adventures in decluttering, specifically decluttering my makeup collection. And we have reached the final video in that actual decluttering process. Um, I'm going to do one more, which will be my sort of wrap up thoughts and we'll probably get deeply philosophical about the whole process of decluttering and what I've discovered and learned and all that fun stuff. But not right now. Right now we're going to be talking about the eyeshadows and I had a feeling when I started this process, when I before I even started it and was just thinking about it, that this was going to be the category that was going to be the most dramatic and perhaps the most long and drawn out process. And it was, although it wasn't as long and drawn out as I thought it was going to be, which was good, unless you consider the fact that I actually started this process last year. And what I did last year was I took almost all of my palettes. I kept a few intact, but I took almost all of my eyeshadow palettes and also a bunch of eyeshadow singles and depotted them. And all of those carcasses are in this box right here. I will, if I remember, I'm going to do a little like, overhead shot so you can just see what's in here. This box is full, mostly of eyeshadow palettes, which are now empty and were depotted. And in case you don't know what that is, what depotting means is basically you take something like a palette and you take all of the individual eyeshadows or whatever's in the palette out and you put it into a different container. And we usually do that to save space because palettes are often really attractive looking, but they often have a lot of wasted space and they take up a lot of room. And so if you have a bunch of them, it can help to take those eyeshadows out and put them into something else. So I did that last year, took the eyeshadows out. I actually at that point released some of those shadows because some of them broke and I just didn't feel like putting them back together or they just weren't useful or whatever. <clears throat> so took, went through that process and that was several days and hours and hours of work, if you can call it work, but whatever. But it actually was work. I mean, it was a lot of effort. So I went through that whole process and I had bought a big makeup palette and then I already had some other makeup, pa you know, the empty magnetic palettes and everything and put them in there. And that's where they have pretty much stayed. And I have not used very many of them at all since then. So when I was considering doing this whole decluttering thing, I, I knew I needed to go through the eyeshadows in, in addition to everything else in my collection. And I knew I needed to release more. I needed to be more cutthroat and just say goodbye to a bunch of them. And so that's what I did. One after one late morning, early afternoon into the evening, I took all of them out and I spread them all out. And I will insert a picture here, um, probably just overlay it so that you can see everything, except understand that there is a layer in that palette that is in the upper right corner, that's the black and white striped one, that is a double sided palette. So it, there is an underneath that you can't see that also has some shadows in it. But that is almost all of the shadows that I started off with. And I sat down and I went through the whole process of swatching them and putting them into, well, putting them into color families, swatching them, judging them. And I had some pretty basic requirements um, that they, they swatch easily. And I know I was doing finger swatches, which is different from brush swatches, but whatever. It's just the easiest and fastest way to do it when you're going through this whole process. So I finger swatch them onto my arm, mostly judging them on the texture. You know, how easily did they come out of the pan? Were they nice and soft and still creamy feeling? Did the color transfer nicely? Or was I having to dig for the color? Did, was there not a whole lot of color payoff or was there plenty of color payoff? And also the looking at the shadows in relation to one another because I had a lot of shadows that were very similar looking as far as tone and color and texture and all of that. So basically I just put them into color families and it ended up being 12 different color families, swatched them all out, made my decisions, and then had two pans, one that was a yes and one that was a no, and then went through that whole process again. But before we get to all of that, just in case you're interested, I know some people like seeing swatch porn, although I didn't really do it the best way I could have because I didn't show you the swatches on my arms. I just wasn't thinking that way, so I apologize. But just in case you want to see 
the color families and laugh at the names that I give some of those color families because I am not a trained artist. I don't have not been trained in color theory and all of that. So it's kind of funny, some of the names that I gave them. But anyways, I did film that process. So just if you're interested, I am going to go ahead and insert that here. Thank goodness iMovie lets you do fast forwarding because that has saved the day and hopefully that'll keep this video from being too terribly long. I will put timestamps down below in the description box and I will put the names of all the color families. Um, it's 16 minutes and I believe 18 seconds as it stands right now that is swatching. So if you want to skip forward to where that's all done and I'm back talking about the process, I will also put that timestamp down below so that you can do that if you just want to skip it all together. I did put some music to it. It's just some standard music that you can find in iMovie because that was the easiest thing for me to do. So if you want to listen to some peppy little piano music, you're free to do that. Or you can mute it and put whatever else you want to on. Put on some death metal, put on some insane clown posse, Dvorak, Tchaikovsky, I don't know, um, house music, whatever you want to do and listen to that while you watch the swatches. I apologize, like I said, I didn't show the swatches on my arms, but anyways, here you go if you're so inclined to watch the process, at least the first round of the process, and that will start right now. <laughs>
feel free to laugh as much as you want at the names that I gave to some of those color groupings because it got really hard, especially those mid-tones, because I have so many mid-tone shadows. <laughs> it was hard sometimes to put them into families that made sense. Anyways, that was the best I could do just as I was looking at them and trying to do as quick of a job as I could and not ponder too much and not hem and haw and, you know, go make it any more difficult than it needed to be. So what you just watched was the first round. So I put them onto, and I, I mentioned I had a, a yes and a no. So here was the yes from that first round that that is a cookie sheet with some parchment paper on it to keep the cookie sheet from getting too messed up with eyeshadow powder because the, the process is messy. So that's the yes. And then I also, of course, had a no. And that is what is here right now, is the no pile. That is the, those are the shadows that didn't make the cut for various reasons. Um, they, maybe the color payoff wasn't great. The texture just wasn't good. Um, it was too similar to another color and the other color was superior in some other way. Maybe it was a bigger pan or it just felt better, you know, it transferred better, whatever. So that's what I ended up with, a yes and a no. I then took that yes pan and I did this off camera. Round two was off camera. I just took that yes pan and I was even more critical with those and just really went through again and just tried to figure out what still needed to go, what still needed to be released. And I did end up releasing some more. As of right now, the number, the final numbers are, I am keeping somewhere around 51 eyeshadows and I am releasing around 115 or so eyeshadows, probably a few more. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I did not totally count, exact, count accurately, but that's as good as I could do with my math skills. I'm a theater major, what can I say? Um, so yeah, so that's what I ended up with. And I'm gonna pop a picture up here of the, of a look at what stands as my final collection. But of course, this is an evolving thing. Also note that the palette that has the large eyeshadows in it, those are two softbox palettes that I went ahead and put into that palette. Um, I've kept the actual palettes that those came out of. The softbox ones are easy to depot. You don't even really have to depot them. They're made to pop out of the palettes. They're made to go into another receptacle if you want to do that. To do that. So I went ahead and put those in since I had the palette because I had some empty palettes after I went through the whole process. So I decided to go ahead and do that. So those technically are two palettes that I kept intact, but I've gone ahead and put them in with the individual shadows. So that is my final eyeshadow collection except for the wet and wild shadows i did consider those separately and i will pop in a little picture here of the before of those again i got i released quite a few of those last year when i was doing the whole depotting thing but this is what i um had before i went through this process and then this is a picture of where it stands right now and it is one palette. It is just one palette. It's one of the large Z palettes and that's it. That's what I've kept. That's also what I'm wearing on my eyes today, which is probably why my eyes look super crazy. I went totally overboard on the eye makeup and I'm totally aware of that and I'm totally going to own that. That's fine. Whatever. And I think I misspoke because I took a look at the picture of my full eyeshadow collection. It does include the Wet n Wilds. Just, just know that I think I might have said something incorrect. Anyways, so I have a picture of my whole eyeshadow collection that includes those two saucebox palettes that I consider palettes, but they're living in the Z palette. Got the Wet n Wilds, got my individual shadows that came out of the whole depotting process and this whole process of decluttering. And then there is also a little pink palette that's sort of up in the upper right corner. That is actually not a makeup palette. That is a sewing uh, notion that you can that I'm pretty sure I bought at Joann's a few years ago and it has a magnetic bottom so you can use it for things like needles and stuff like that it actually does work for makeup and that is what I keep on my vanity table on a daily basis and that's where I put things that I'm currently using so and you'll see there's a little palette that looks that's in the um, the shadows are in the shape of a British flag and that's a Rimmel palette that I've had for years that I'm just using up and yeah so that's that wasn't even really considered part of it because I this whole process because I do use that on a, an almost daily basis. But anyways, so that is how it stands right now. That is what I have in my collection. It feels much more under control. It feels 
like I can handle what I have now, like I can actually work through what I have, the things will actually work for me, they are good quality still for the time being, but I'm going to continue to be critical and be willing to release things. That's the great thing about depotting. I know not everybody likes depotting. Uh, some people regret it. They'll depot and then they'll regret because they would rather have kept the palettes intact. And that's a totally individual decision as far as your taste and everything. I really like it because then I can release stuff. I Because I don't know how you guys are, but I will buy a palette and a lot of times I will only use a few colors out of that palette. I very rarely, if ever, use every single palette, every single color in the palette equally. You know, you find a few that you like and then there are others that maybe the texture just isn't as good or the colors don't work as well on you or whatever. You know, your, your taste is just such that you like these but not these other ones. So it's so easy to use just a few colors, but you're gonna keep the whole palette. So depotting means that I can release the things that don't work for me and keep the ones that do. So this that's what it's done for me. And I like that. I'm very glad that I went through the process. It was kind of annoying at times. It was a lot, it was a lot of work. I mean, it, it's just, it, you're just having to put in the time and that's the only thing. Um, so it's a good thing that I don't have a nine to five job right now because it gave me the time to do this. So that's been good. But I'm very glad that I went through it because I feel like I'm not overwhelmed with looking at this. I don't feel like I'm just avoiding dealing with it because I don't even wanna look at them because there's too many for me to choose from and I just feel overwhelmed looking at them. I feel like I can actually use what I have now. The only thing that I might want to add going forward, at least right now from the perspective I have at this current moment, is maybe add some individual shadows or add colors that I don't already have. I don't think I'm gonna need to buy any brown, beige, or basically dirt colored shadows for quite a while. I think I have plenty of those. I may want to add some fun colors. It's Sugar Pill, I believe, that has a palette out right now called the Fun Size Palette. It's really cute. I'll pop a picture of it up here. And it's very colorful. And it's mostly colors that I don't have. So I could see myself investing in some of those or maybe some colors from some indie makeup brands that sell these really cool like duochromes or multi-chrome shadows. I've been looking at Notoriously Morbid, sell individual pans, and I can see myself buying some of those in the future. Just like one or two here or there, or if it's a palette like the Sugar Pill palette it, that is full of colors that I don't own. Something fun, something that I don't already own so that it's not just another brown or neutral or whatever you call them eye palette that I already have plenty of. So going forward, that's what I could see myself doing is investing in something like that as opposed to buying all these palettes and palettes and palettes. And it's just from years of watching people talk about them and haul them and, you know, the hype and everything. And I fell for a lot of that. That's totally my fault. Totally on me. It has nothing to do with anybody else. I know people love to do these YouTube maybe buy it type videos. But I mean, I, I'm the one who ultimately made the decision. So but whatever, I'll get into that when I do my wrap up, what I learned from this whole process video. But anyways, that is the shadow process. That is what I went through. I am so glad I did it. I never want to go through it again. I never want to end up in a position where I have to do all of that. Again, I really don't. I am hoping that I have learned and that I will keep this in mind when I make purchases in the future so that I have will actually change my behavior and not just in the short term, but in the long term. I think that's one of the tricks with changing your mindset is doing that for the long term. Sometimes it's easy to do something in the short term, like kind of like going on a diet. You know, you say, oh, I'm not gonna eat these foods or whatever for this amount of time. And that's great. And so in the short term, you will, whatever it is you wanna do, lose weight, change your blood numbers, whatever. But long term is often where we fail because we don't address the issues that are causing us to do those things. We're not addressing those underlying issues, which will help us in the long term. But anyways, that, those are my thoughts. Take them for what they are. Feel free to question them or do something different in your life. I mean, we're all different. The different things work for different people, but this has definitely worked for me. If you feel overwhelmed with anything in your life, I highly suggest going through some kind of process like this, whether it's with makeup or with craft supplies or with clothing or your kitchen or whatever, even if it's just going through one drawer in your dresser at a time and just going through like one thing at a time, a one tote, one box, one closet, one 
kitchen cabinet, whatever it is, and just do one at a time and address it little by little. You know, you'll eventually get to it all. You don't have to do it all at once, like I did with my makeup, and over the course of like two weeks, deal with it. But, you know, I think it's great. I think it's it has released some, what I didn't even realize was a burden on me, and it has helped me feel not overwhelmed when I look at what I have. And I feel like this is something that I can actually use. It's now useful to me. I'm not avoiding it. I'm not just using the same thing over and over. I'm actually using some of the stuff that I've rediscovered because I've actually taken it out and looked at it and touched it all. And it's reminded me of what I have. And I think that's great. You know, we live in a country of abundance and we can often get overwhelmed by that abundance. So going through something like this, I think it'd be super helpful because it reminds you of what you have instead of you focusing on what you don't have. Because so much of YouTube and just culture in general is telling you about what you don't have and trying to sell you on stuff that you don't have instead of helping you appreciate what you do have. And this process has helped me appreciate what I still have. Um, yeah, so that is it. I hope that was inspiring, motivating, or entertaining, if nothing else. I have learned a lot. I learned a, I learned some new things in iMovie. That was kind of exciting. And I've learned a lot about myself, and I will talk about that in my wrap-up uh, video, which will... I think I'm going to take maybe a week or two to get my thoughts together on that, and then also at some point in the not-so-distant future, I would also like to give just a short tour of what I have in my collection. I've already made a few changes since some of the videos I've done earlier in the series, like the lip and the blush and highlight, and then the cream eyeshadow one. So yeah, I've already made some changes and I may make more changes before I even do that, but I will I will at some point do a quick little tour of what I what I still have in my makeup collection just if you're interested in seeing what I have. And um yeah. So that's where we are. Thank you so much for taking this trip with me. This has been really interesting. It's been very eye-opening. It has uh I feel so much better, so I highly encourage any of you out there who are struggling with the stuff in your life to go through this process with whatever might be overwhelming you. I think it's a really great thing to do. So thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. There is a subscribe button and a share button conveniently located down below. Um, please leave any comments if you have anything that you're struggling with that you need to release that you're feeling overwhelmed with. Feel free to share that in the comments because I think it can help to hear that other people are having issues because you may feel like you're the only one who does, but you probably aren't. So definitely share those down below and please come back for my future videos. Hit that notification bell to, so that you can find out when I've released a new video. I release one to two videos every week talking about my adventures in middle aging and I'm going to be exploring some new things coming up so stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for being here and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care of yourself.